space science students. I'm here in room 320 and um, wanted to talk about one of my assignments uh, or one of the assignments that I gave you guys a little while ago. Um, this is uh, this running in the background is a video about uh, volcanoes. Um, I've got here in front of you in fr the globe and multiple movies. One of the movies here in this video library that I have in the classroom is Unlocking the Mysteries of Light. Uh, nope. It's, yeah, here it is. It's right here next to the globe. This one right here. Unlocking the Mysteries of Light. And um, so I wanted to talk about that one a little bit because um, it seems like the, the, uh, the comments and questions that I asked you to, to do or, uh, were, was maybe pretty difficult. And um, I just did want to try to make sure that we got some understanding on this particular video. Now, as I said in the handout, some of the things you need to know about unlocking the mysteries of life video is um, the idea about DNA molecules being made up of multiple molecules of um, adenine, cysteine, guanine, and thiamine. And uh, these four different deoxyribonucleic acids are used to create base pairs, um, and then at each of three base pairs corresponds to a particular amino acid, one of 20 different amino acids that are used to build proteins, okay? So three, three um, a sequence of three of these uh, DNA molecules corresponds to a, uh, a protein that gets assigned in in building a protein of amino acids. And there are three billion base pairs in the DNA, uh, and they're, uh, they are all wound up in chromosomes, and there's 23 pairs of chromosomes. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, uh, and then there's a five minute video about how amino acids uh, get made that I pointed you to on this uh, handout. And then, during the process of transcription, the information stored at the gene's DNA is transferred to a similar molecule called RNA, ribonucleic acid, and the cell nucleus, in the cell nucleus. A type of RNA called transfer RNA assembles the protein one amino acid at a time, okay? So there's a process for how amino acids get made um, in a detail that you can look up on this if, if you're confused about any of that. So on a separate piece of paper, uh, while watching the video, please write down anything you learn, questions and or comments. Try to answer any questions below as homework. This will be graded as a 20 point homework assignment due, uh, due as soon as you get it done. So the reasons for watching, there are many things you will hopefully gain watching this presentation this uh, unlocking the mystery of life. Uh, insight knowledge of known life-giving biological processes. So I'm hoping that you're gonna learn something. Uh, an improved appreciation and understanding regarding the enormous complexity of living beings from a single-celled organism to a blade of grass to humans. Learn about irreducible complexity. Now those words are very important. I think irreducible complexity is, uh, is a vocabulary term that you should be able to carry with you for the rest of your life. Irreducible complexity um, is in the case of unlocking the mystery of life, the one that they go into is the outboard motor that drives a Euglena's little outboard tail so it motivates through water, okay? talks about the motor assembly, uh, including the, uh, the little tail assembly. And it talks about how irreducibly complex 
the uh, motor and tail are and how if any piece of the motor and tail are missing, then the motor and tail don't work and therefore don't provide a benefit to the organism and therefore Darwin's theory of small changes um, to make uh, benefits to living organism is what drives evolution uh, it really doesn't make any sense because a small change doesn't necessarily create a benefit. Wh rather, uh, large changes are required in order to make anything that works, any mutation that works. And uh, as we know from watching some other videos in this library of videos, um, the probability of anything like that happening is slim and none. It is operationally impossible. Irreducible complexity alone is enough to dissolve anybody thinking that evolution happened through Darwinian mechanisms, okay? So practice talking about irreducible complexity in your assignment. Um, consider the extreme improbability of a beneficial mutation creating an advantage. Notice the scientists featured in this video some of them, for example, Gene Kenyon, created textbooks used today to teach the dominant biological evolutionary theory of our time. Why are these textbooks and claims still being taught today? That's a question. I wonder, I wonder what you say. What, why do you think that those theories are still being taught today when we know much better now about what it takes to create uh, life in the first place, as well as life changes for the better, or for the worse, whichever, as long as it still works. Okay, we know God's word is true, but at the same time, the world pushes almost overwhelmingly a pseudoscientific theory of evolution as fact. Possibly you can learn to help others break free from the theory of evolution and make it easier for them to believe in the creator God of the Bible that loves them unconditionally and wants them to spend eternity with him in glory. That's why I wanted you to watch this video. I want you to be able to help others know God's love for them through scientific discovery. Okay? How does the flagella motor get built by a euglena cell? How does an irreducibly complex system get built? Comment on the complexity of the human genome given that we start as a single celled zygote at conception. So I was wanting you to think about these very deep questions. Yes, they are uh, not easy questions to answer. Uh, in no way, shape, or form did I expect you to, as a high school science student, to know uh, the answers to these questions. And so I, I wrote the questions more specifically to give you an opportunity to um, expand on what you know from your experiences. I want you to get good at pulling up those experiences uh, so that you can discuss this particular topic. In my next video to you guys, uh, I'm going to talk about um, how I would have done the assignment or what I might have done to do the assignment, I should say, where uh, for all the videos that you see in front of you. We've seen a few of these videos, uh, several of them. Uh, Unlocking the Mystery of Life was just one. We've seen the... Uh, I believe we've seen the fingerprints of creation. I believe we've seen the young age of the earth. I believe we've seen the our created solar system. I believe we've seen the programming of life. I don't know, I don't remember if we've seen the privileged planet. I think I might have shown it to my ICP class last year, and many of you are in my ICP class last year. Uh, Noah's Ark is a very interesting video if you'd like to borrow it or find it on, on the World Wide Web uh, and watch it. Uh, it basically um, uh, takes you through the Noah's Flood and some of the scientific uh, details about that uh, and the misunderstandings that 
scientists like to promote about Noah's Ark uh, so that um, we can be seen as uh, believing a lie. But it's really not a lie. Noah's Ark's not a lie. Lo Noah's Ark exists on Mount Ararat right now underneath a um, icy, uh, what are those called? Glacier. And uh, as well as uh, there's other aspects about Noah's Ark. Darwin's Dilemma talks about the, um, uh, the fact that the fossil record all of a sudden begins in our creation history. Fossils uh, don't exist uh, in, um, uh, in uh, how do I want to say this? Fossils began to exist all at once. Let's put it that way. Fossils began to exist all at once. That's, that's told in the coal record, C-O-A-L, coal mining record. We're finding trees and, and um, fossils and dinosaur footprints in coal deposits that uh, prove that everything happened at once. It, it didn't happen over eons like they uh, like to promote. Uh, programming of life talks about the imp impossibility, the operational impossibility of um, of the uh, life beginning, and um, talks about our created universe and our created solar system. Uh, these videos. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting into our uh, our stars and our universe in the near future. Um, and I just kind of wanted to, to give you this taste of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish in teaching creation science to you in the midst of your earth space science um, information and technology. I, as scientists, uh, it, sh it would be good for you to be able to share your faith with others using scientific terminology because they're not necessarily interested in hearing about God. They're interested in hearing about the, the, what makes it easy to believe that God exists. Does that make sense? And, and they're starving for it. They're starving for the information because nobody is sharing it. Nobody takes this information that's available to scientists and promotes it in the education system that we all experience. So, uh, it's, or I should say it's rare. I shouldn't say nobody. I guess I'm somebody. And I love you, and I mean to do it well, and I certainly would love to talk to you more about any, anything along these lines. I love you. Uh, God bless you. I went to go turn off the screen instead of my video. It's all good.